Welcome to this amazing exclusive episode. We just want to see what happens right here. VP? We want to visit Vigingi Africa Limited. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Asante sana. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are visiting Vigingi Africa Limited. They are doing amazing work from waste products, plastics, and uh, um, waste products to make materials that we are going to look at the process and what happens and takes place here. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have amazing conversation with the CEO and the people who are working at Vigingi Africa Limited and see what takes place right here. So from wherever you are, sit down, take a look at what is happening here. Saseni, Mkopoa, thank you so much. Asante sana. Yeah, so we have visited uh, this amazing business and uh, see what's going on here, the whole process and what takes place here. Are you comfortable with that? Karibu sana. Asante sana. We are looking for the CEO or the director or whoever is in charge. Okay, I'm in charge. Ah, Sante Sada. So, utasima matuki dogo, so that we can take a look at what's happening here. So, maybe you can just introduce yourself to our viewers, now that we have kind of ambushed you kidogo. My name is <laughs> <laughs> Joel Alogo. I work with Vigingi Africa. I'm in charge of operations. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, just briefly, uh, for someone who is watching and they just heard about Vigingi Africa Limited, what is all about Vigingi Africa Limited? Vigingi... Africa Limited, we are manufacturers of recycled plastic posts. We recycle plastic waste, that is HDP, LDP, and PP, into fencing posts and uh, other products like planks that can be used for construction and even bullards for road signs. Yeah. Yes. When you talk about HDP, LDP, this PPP, these many P's, what does they mean? Okay, HDP is yeah, yeah. for high density plastic. Uh -huh. LDP is for low density plastic mm -hmm. and PP is polypropylene plastic. Uh -huh. So which means all plastics you do the process here of, for the for the waste products. Yes, we use all plastic waste uh -huh. but uh, pet plastic mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and and PVC plastic we only use a very minimal quantities uh -huh. yes all right so are you able to show us the process what takes place before all this is uh, is done yes i am uh -huh. uh, you're welcomed uh -huh. we can see the the process starts from here uh -huh. where the waste plastic is brought in from the dumping sites in sacks uh -huh. and then we have a unit small unit for sorting and passing them through magnets to remove foreign particles uh -huh. And then we have the crusher where we break down the bigger lumps and the bigger plastic waste yeah. into smaller units. And then we have the extruder. And then from the extruder, it's pushed into the mold mm -hmm. and then the cooling process. And the last is uh, the final the product. Final product. Yes. Wow. So how did this whole idea come, you know, and when did it start? Uh, the idea has been a long journey. We started from garbage collection some years back, early 2000. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we've been asking ourselves, what else can we do with the waste? Because if you look at the landfills, majorly it's plastics. Yeah. If you look at uh, our water bodies, it's, they are filled with plastics. Yeah. And uh, places, even the lives in the water bodies yeah. is being affected. Even the plants are being affected. Right. So we've been asking ourselves, what can we do? to save their lives. Yeah. That is when we tried doing our research through YouTube yeah. and even online, mm -hmm. and we discovered that it's happening in other countries. Yeah. So we asked ourselves, what can we do to save this back at home in Kenya? Wow, you just got it yourself. They did their research on YouTube and through online, and they came up with this idea. And so if you're watching this channel for the first time as usual, make sure you subscribe so that you can watch these amazing, amazing episodes of such activities more and more. Uh, the plastics, the PPPs, the L LDPs, or the LPPs, so that we can know the difference. Eh? Okay. Uh -huh. This is a combination of LDP. This is a combination of LDP mm -hmm. and PP plastic. Uh -huh. And uh, these ones come from the landfills when they are already broken down uh -huh. because they are majorly wa ma industrial wastage. Yeah. Yes. And we also have the PP waste that comes in these formats. Uh -huh. 
Huh? This so is these are the PP waste. This is PP waste. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. So all these ones, are, can you process them at the same time, or the the PP waste are being processed on their own? They are processed together, mm -hmm. and uh, at different ratios. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is what determines how we use them mm -hmm. yes so once the waste products come in sacks yes. what is the next process from here like the pp waste that you've seen are in big particles yeah. they are taken through a crusher mm -hmm. well the ldp and hdp yeah. are taken through a sorting process where we pass through a magnet mm -hmm. to remove foreign particles mostly metallic yeah. because that will affect our process mm -hmm. yes wow and then from there from there, they are put into the extruder, where they are molded into, they are pushed into mold through the extrusion process. And uh, that is where they form the shapes that is required. And then from there, it's taken into the cooling process. Yes. Wow. Then from there, now you come up with the poles and the, you know, the, the pole, the end product, depending on the sizes that you, that you worked on. Now, I just want us to have a look of, uh, of, the, of the site, of what's going on here so that we can also know the the crusher the 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 mold the molder and everything Cindy yeah so my cameraman please just come so that we can see what happens right here in the site Mr Logo uh we are now at the site of course this is where now the processing takes place once the uh, products or the waste products have arrived in form of sacks yeah. so from here what next once they have arrived here, yeah. we have ratios that we use uh -huh. for LDP, PP, mm -hmm. and HDP. Yeah. So they are brought in, and there are guys who do sorting, uh -huh. because what we produce as waste inside here uh -huh. is also crushed together with the PP waste, uh -huh. and then they are mixed at a particular ratio together with the LDP and PP waste. Yeah. And then they are taken through a spark, uh -huh. where a spark is taken through the mixture, mm -hmm. so that we are able to remove foreign particles, mm -hmm. especially metals. Yeah. Because if they get into the extruder, uh -huh. the met metallic pro foreign metallic products yeah. will affect the process. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so like uh, I'm seeing the, 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 the mixing, like the, the extraction of the, uh, uh, the, the metal, the metallic uh, products. Huh? Mm -hmm. How sure are you that by the time they are leaving this place, mm -hmm. there is no metallic uh, 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 I mean material? Uh, uh, one, mm -hmm. there is someone who is trained to just do that. Uh -huh. And that is what he does every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the training, yeah. we believe that he's understood because it's long, like for the past three, four months, we've never had a case of a foreign particle in the extruder. Wow. And that's proof enough that uh, the process is working. It's working. Yes. And then now from, the, from there now, the materials that he has uh, mixed and you know, uh, passed through the, 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 the spark mm -hmm. now are taken to? The extruder. Uh -huh. We, we have an extruder machine. Yeah. Currently, we are having two. Uh -huh. And then uh, it's in the extruder, yeah. that is where the heating process is done. Mm -hmm. And also the extrusion that pushes the slur that is formed in the extruder uh -huh. into the mold. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And now with the mold, we have different types. Yeah. We have square and round uh -huh. and different sizes from 3 inch to 6 inch, uh -huh. depending on what the customer requires. But majorly... Yeah. The six inch, we are trying to introduce it into the market mm -hmm. for road construction mm -hmm. to be used as bullards along the roads. Yeah. Yes. The one that, is, you know, that has been marked yellow, black. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Wow. So uh, throughout this whole process, yes. what is the most challenging part as, as, as you start from, you know, packaging of the waste materials to crushing to where you pass it through the spark to the molding and all that? Currently, our bottleneck is between removing from the extrusion to the cooling. Mm -hmm. Because when you're removing it from there, the temperatures are high, yeah. it's a risk. And then you put it to the cooling unit, yeah. it's also heavy yeah. when it's full. Mm -hmm. Because on average, a three inch mold will weigh between 10 and 13 kgs. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
four inch will weigh between 22 and 25 kgs, oh. and the six inch will go up to around 35 k kil kilos. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, that's so heavy. Yes. And then now, uh, what? So when you talk about the temperatures are so high, what are the temperatures that mold this uh, thing from the uh, from when you put it there? to the time it's coming, to make it the slur that is coming out? There are units that uh, goes up to 250 degrees. Oh. Yes, and the lowest is 200. Wow, that's very hot. Yes. <laughs> uh, HDP plastic is very strong. Mm -hmm. And at times when you find foreign, when you find PVC, mm -hmm. it also needs higher temperatures yeah. to burn it. Yeah. Yes, that's why the temperatures are that high. Wow. Yeah. You know, this is a very unique idea. And that's why I was asking you, how did the idea come? And you know, uh, you've tried impl implementing it. How many years now in the market? This is uh, now one and a half years since we started. We started in 2021, mm -hmm. June, mm -hmm. yes. And how, how far can you rate the market growth so far since you uh, came into the market? What was the reception and how, how do you see the market growing on your side? There's a lot of improvement, especially for people in the rural areas those who are doing fencing of their farms, yeah. because one thing that stands out, our products are not consumed by rust or rot. Yeah. Well, uh, from what we've discovered, many people who've been using timber yeah. have been, ha have had to redo the fencing three or four times, or even more times mm -hmm. in their lifetime. Yeah. Well, this guarantees a lifetime fencing product wow when you talk about uh, a, a lifetime you know uh, we've seen uh, other forms of fencing before yes. like you know the concrete yes. the metallic yes. the timber one yes. and the and uh, now this one why why would someone choose this over the rest one thing that stands out when you talk of the metallic you talk of the concrete yeah. and the timber yeah. they are all affected by rot and rust it doesn't matter how long it takes, yeah. but on average, I know timber will not take you more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. I know concrete, depending on how the mixing is done, yeah. on average between 15 and 20 years, you'll have to rethink of something else to, you can use. Yeah. What we are having, we guarantee you 30 years and above. Wow. Because uh, from our research, we've realized that plastic takes more than 500 years to rot. rot yeah. Well. Because we are taking it back into the process, we are giving an average of between 30 and above years. Wow. Yes. Uh -huh. That's so amazing. And of course, uh, when you talk about all this, this, uh, these years and everything, what has been the feedback of you know, the people who have purchased or used this before as far as the company or the product is concerned? Maybe their feedback, Mutua Kinunua. What has been, have you had that challenging feedback that you improve on? Or uh, what has been the general feedback? Okay, a major challenge we've had is because of breakages. Yeah. And this mostly happens when someone buys a three inch and is going to fence a bigger farm. Uh -huh. So, and we realize that from that, we've been able to advise our clients, if you're doing more than two acres, don't use three inch. At least use three and four at a certain ratio yeah. or use four inch depending on the size of your land. Yeah. Number two, if you're fencing in an environment where there are cows, mm -hmm. bigger animals, yeah. don't use three, three inch. inch. Use bigger the posts poles. from three in, from four inch, four inch and above. Yeah. N number three, mm -hmm. we also are still working on our mixing ratios yeah. so that we are able to get something that is more durable to avoid the breakages. Yeah. So we've been playing around with our ratios so that we avoid the complaint of breakages, which is our major complaint yeah. from our past experience for the one and a half years. Yeah. That's so awesome. And so far, um, if you look at uh, this whole uh, process, it's crazy. It's, it looks costly, d d does it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. One, because of the maintenance, our machines are mostly customized locally. So the maintenance cost is a bit high. Yeah. And because uh, every day, like when you're coming in, I just showed you a machine that we are trying to fabricate yeah. so that we can use as a dryer. Yeah. So when you're developing something of your own, it's both a learning process. And again, you're trying to achieve a goal. Yeah. So for you to perfect it, it takes 
a, a, a long while. Yeah. For example, when we first had our first extruder, producing a post took us more than three hours. Oh. Today, we are doing it within five minutes. Yeah. So it's a great improvement and we are thanking God for this far. Wow. Yes. So like in a day, if just if the machine is running frequently, maybe from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. when, when we are during the working hours, mm -hmm. how many posts continuously can the, can the company produce in a day? Our machines have the potential of doing between 240 mm -hmm. and 300 posts per day. Wow. Well, because even our operators are still on training, yeah. if we achieve 100, 120, That's we are happy. That's yes. Nice. Uh -huh. Wow. So uh, you, uh, when you talk about uh, the cost, the co being costy and then it being a learning process, someone may ask how affordable <laughs> in terms of this uh, beautiful product? Okay, we c I cannot give you the overall value yeah. because uh, we are still developing. Mm -hmm. But uh, so far mm -hmm. it has costed and we've ha we are lucky because we are able to have friends who are also willing to work with us the journey yeah. and they've been able to partner with us when we need support yeah and then now when it comes to the products someone will be asking how how affordable is the products from Vigingi as compared to the other products we know. say we are affordable uh -huh. number one yeah. because of durability yeah. currently we are selling our three inch post yeah. at 80 shillings per foot wow we are selling our four inch post at 130 per foot. per foot. We are selling our six inch post at 300 per foot. Per foot. Yes. The one that can be used by the road, by the, yes. by, uh, by the roadsides. Yes. Wow, that's so affordable. Yes. <laughs> that's uh, You need to try this one more time. Yeah. So as we, as we just about to wind up, um, what can you guarantee people who are watching and people who will be interested or someone who might be interested in working with Vigingi Africa Limited mm -hmm. in terms of business, in terms of the products, and in terms of the whole, the whole process? I guarantee them quality. Yeah. I guarantee them a solution, a lifetime solution on their fencing or garden furniture products. Yeah. I guarantee them that we are continually our R&D department is working hard to make sure that we have more products like roofing tiles, yeah. flooring tiles, mm -hmm. so that in future yeah. we are able to bring even the cost of construction down. Yeah. Number four, we are here to build and make our environment better. Mm -hmm. When you use our fencing post, yeah. you're saving a tree and you're saving nature. Wow. When you use our fencing post, you're saving our environment, you're saving our marine life. So let's do Vigingi and make our nature better. And why Vigingi? Why, why, why the name Vigingi actually? Vigingi <laughs> is a Swahili word that means fencing post. Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. Uh, what can you say about the general uh, products of uh, Vigingi Africa mm -hmm. as we wind up? And then now we can share the contacts. Okay. Oh, our pro the things that our products can do, apart from just fencing, yeah. already if you are using our roads, mm -hmm. the signposts are done by our products. Uh -huh. wow. We are now introducing the bullards mm -hmm. and we are advising, instead of having metallic bullards on the roads, yeah. we can have recycled plastic bullards mm -hmm. from here, especially from the six inch yeah. posts that we are doing. Mm -hmm. Guys who are in agriculture, yeah. instead of using timber, to do your kennels and even do your poultry cages and dairy farmhouses, yeah. use plastic products. Yeah. And the reason why I'm saying this, this plastic does not absorb any liquid product. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're doing your fumigations, when you're, doing your, you're applying your pesticides and all that, when you use plastic post, after a short while, you will find the kennels and the farmhouses very fresh yeah. because it doesn't absorb. It will only serve the purpose of killing the pests. Yeah. But the environment will be good for your animals and even fresh for you when you're doing your milking or when you're taking care of your animals. Wow. Yes. And then number three, we also have a farm garden furniture. Yeah that can be oh. done from our product. Mm -hmm. like we have samples of the stools, we yeah. have a sample of the gazebo yeah. that can be done from our products. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And then maybe someone may be asking that uh, if they buy this particular product, ni kitu mtu anaweza paka rangi ama mtu tu lazima tumie tu hivyo venye iko. You can paint them. Uh-huh. You can paint them. Of your uh, color of your choice. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's so awesome. And uh, of course as we wind up maybe how can someone reach Vigingi Africa Limited? Maybe they are not in Nairobi, they uh, or maybe they uh, they can make it to Nairobi. Where are you located? Or they are not in Nairobi, how can they do their orders? How can they reach you? Okay, we are based in industrial area along Nanyuki Road next to Nairobi Joint Depot and uh, Kobil Gas Refilling Station. Yeah. And uh, we are on Facebook as Vigingi Africa. We are on Instagram as Vigingi Africa. Yeah. We have a website that Vigingi www.vigingiafrica.com. We have phone numbers that are always available. Yeah. And I'll give the phone numbers. Yeah. One is uh, 0758-916-658. The other one is a uh, 0740-692-271. You can just repeat it one more time. 0740-692-271. Wow. Thank you. And uh, once, if maybe if someone uh, does their orders, how long does can it take maybe to reach up country or for it to be delivered? Currently, our lead time is 14 days. Wow. If you do your order today, we count 14 days. Mm-hmm and you'll have your products ready. If you are not in Nairobi, yeah. we deliver all over Kenya. Mm-hmm. We've partnered with a few transport guys yeah. who will give you a friendly cost. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. So which means the delivery is uh, countrywide and uh, uh, starting from Nairobi to everywhere in Kenya where you do your orders, you will be rest assured that Vigingi Africa Limited will deliver to your satisfaction. Yes. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. And of course, we wish you all the best. We'll come some other day to do another interview to make sure that each and every time people visit our channel or visit our pages, they get something about Vigingi. Thank you too. Yes. Thank you for thinking about us and even supporting us. I really appreciate. Mungu <laughs> kubariki. May God bless you. Thank you so much to our production team. Thank you so much. And everyone who has been watching, everyone who has been part of this, may God bless you. See you another time. Give Vigingi Africa Limited a try and get the best of your satisfaction. Thank you so much. My name is Simi Kenya. Until next time, may God bless you.